Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to build an Arduino based reaction timer. The timer lights up a red LED and then measures how long it takes you to respond to the light by pushing a button. The timer takes to turn the LED on is randomized to eliminate guessing and the game disregards the input if you hold the button down before the LED comes on. It is powered by two AA batteries and is completely portable, making it a great coffee table or desktop toy to play around with when you're bored, or to challenge your friends and family. To build your own reaction timer, you're going to need an Arduino Pro Micro, an OLED display module, an LED, a push button, and two resistors, one 220 ohm and one 10k. You'll also need some ribbon cable and header pins to assemble it permanently. Here's the circuit diagram. You can assemble the timer on a breadboard using jumpers just for fun, or 3D print the enclosure and make it more permanent. I started out on a breadboard to test the circuits and code before assembling them. Now that our components are assembled on the breadboard, let's have a look at the code. We start by importing the libraries required for the OLED display, then define the display's width and height in pixels. We then create the display object, define the pins for the push button and LED, and then create variables to record the start and end time to measure the reaction duration. In the setup function, we define the pin modes for the LED and button, and then start the display. If there's a problem with communicating with the display, the program won't continue into the loop function. In the loop function, we clear the display, and then set the font size and color before displaying press to play. If the button is pressed, then we start the reaction timer routine. A countdown is started in the form of displaying ready, and then three dots in one second increments. After the last dot is displayed, we generate a random delay between 2 seconds and 7 seconds. This is to eliminate the possibility of a user learning the timing in the routine and trying to time their press to guess when the LED is going to light up. We then wait this period of time, then turn the LED on and record the start time, and then wait for the user to push the button. Once the button is pushed, we record the end time, turn the LED off, and then calculate their total reaction time. I've then included a section to disregard the input if the response time was less than 20 milliseconds. After doing a bit of research online, it seems that most people's response time is about 200 milliseconds, with professional athletes and gamers being able to reduce this to 120 milliseconds. In fact, the IAAF defines a false start as an athlete responding to the gun in under 100 milliseconds. So 20 is well under this threshold, and is mainly in place to make sure that the button is initially released and not just held down the whole time. If your reaction time was valid, then it will be displayed on the screen for 5 seconds, before the code returns to the initial screen. Let's upload the code and try it out. I wanted to see if the reaction timer could be powered by batteries, and how long they would last. I hooked up two AA batteries to supply 3 volts to the timer, and measured the current being drawn. You can see the current fluctuate based on how much text is displayed and it sparks at around 25 milliamps when the LED is on. AA batteries vary quite a lot, but you should get around 70 to 100 hours of on time from a fresh set of alkaline batteries. 
Next, I assembled the components using ribbon cable and some header pins. I replaced the push button on the breadboard with this one for the permanent assembly. This has a much more robust feel and is easier to press. I then measured up the components and designed a small 3D printable housing for them. The housing has cutouts for the display, LED and push button on the top and a slot for the power switch on the side. To replace the batteries you'll have to remove the front cover, but you shouldn't have to do this very often. I printed out the components using black PLA with a 15% infill. The display is held in place with clips along the top edge and using a plastic clamp with an M3 by 6mm screw along the bottom edge. The LED just presses into place and the push button is held in place using the ring nut which is supplied with it. Push the power switch through the side of the housing. It can be held in place using a drop of super glue if it's a bit loose. Then slide the battery holder into the bottom of the housing and connect the power cable, making sure that you get the polarity correct. It's also a good idea to use heat shrink tubing around your exposed connections or cover them up with a bit of insulation tape. You don't want any terminals or leads shorting out once you've placed them into the housing together. Attach the front cover and secure it with four M3 by 12 mm cap screws. I've used 12 mm screws so that I didn't have to use threaded brass inserts in the housing. The 12 mm length on the screws is enough to get a good grip on the housing without it pulling through the plastic. Just don't over tighten them. Once the screws are secure, slide the switch to turn on your reaction timer and try it out. Have fun improving your reaction time by trying to beat your personal best and challenging your friends and family. Let me know what your best reaction time is in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics projects, tutorials and reviews.